if, even if particularly we're studying Iman, if we're talking about faith building, if we're talking about good qualities, good characteristics, spiritual development, it's of course very beneficial. But you are here at a course about marriage, right? So what relevance does this have to marriage? So what I want to highlight to you is I'm going to jump forward a little bit. At the end of this section where Allah describes these people who he refers to as the slaves of the most merciful, there is this beautiful dua at the end of that passage that we are all very, very familiar with. And the dua touches right at the core, at the very essence of what we're discussing the entire weekend. وَالَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا هَبْلَنَا مِنْ أَزْوَاجِنَا وَذُرِّيَّاتِنَا قُرَّةَ أَعْيُنٍ قُرَّةَ أَعْيُنٍ Which, for those who might not be familiar, the translation is that and those who say, our Lord, our Master, gift to us, grant us within our spouse and our children, right, within our spouses and our children, now this, can, this has been translated in a number of different ways, but I'm not really interested in the translation of it. I'm interested in the translation of the concept, not the words. Okay, because the translation of the words is always going to leave something to be desired. Right? So some translate it as the coolness of the eyes, right? Which is an expression that I like to refer to as Muslim English. Everyone know Muslim English? It's, it's their English vocabulary words or English expressions that only Muslims use. All right, but if you said it in front of a non-Muslim, they would have literally no idea what you were talking about. <laughs> Coolness of the eyes, calmness of the eyes, and there's a long, big old list. I'm not going to get into it right now. It, it actually agitates me. So, <laughs> but the concept of qurratu ayn or qurratu ayun. What that refers to is an experience, something in your life, someone in your life, that just the sight of them brings you comfort, brings you happiness. Just seeing them brightens your day. Lightens your burden. Makes you forget about whatever it is that you just dealt with. Hearing their voice actually takes your stress level down a couple of notches. Just picking up the phone and that voice on the other end that says, Hello, Assalamu alaikum. Hey, how's it going? What's going on? How's your day? And you've been having the worst day in the world, and your response is, oh, alhamdulillah, it's going great. Because it, the la it just got great, that's why. That's Quranatu A'in. Just sitting in their company is just relaxing. Right, where it's like, I wanna hang out with, you know, like somebody's like, I wanna just hang out with my spouse, I wanna spend the day with my spouse, I wanna do something with my spouse. And you're just sitting there with them, and it's kind of like, well, what did you do? And you have trouble explaining to other people what you did, <laughs> right? Because they said, hey, you got any plans this weekend? Yeah, I got plans with my wife. And then afterwards, when they see you after the weekend, they're like, so what did y'all do? And you have trouble explaining it to them because you didn't do anything by normal people's standards. Because you just literally just kind of sat around and just, just we're in someone's company. And you just talked a little here, watched a little TV, got out, warmed up something, you know, cold and nasty out of the refrigerator, right? Just microwaved frozen food, and you ate it, and you just, just. And, but somebody's like, how was your weekend? And you're like, it was amazing. What did you do? Nothing, just sat around. <laughs> stared into space for a little while, <laughs> made small talk, just talked about here and there, this and that, watched a little TV, 
warmed up some frozen food and just ate it. And then went to sleep. And they're like, that's the worst weekend of all time. <laughs> that is so sad. Right? Single people are like, that's so sad. It's like, no, you're sad. <laughs> you're sad. You just don't know. You don't know. Right? I know that's kind of me. I don't care. But um, <laughs> so, so now, that's what Qur'an to Ayyum refers to. And then make us a role model home and family, an exemplary family and home for the best people. Like make us the cream of the crop. Make us the role model, the standard, the exemplars for like really great, amazing people. That's the dua. And we all know the dua. And it's a beautiful dua. But I, want, I, I remind you of what I told you. And in fact, if I remember correctly, I even told you to kind of jot it down. However, in your own words, every single thing, every single word that Allah uses in the Quran, says in the Quran, comes within the Quran, is divine and precise, and exact and accurate. And not only what Allah says is precise, but how he says it, when he says it, the sequence in which he says it, it is all precise and on the spot and on the dot. So the fact that this is the very last thing that Allah mentions about these amazing people, before he talks about them going to paradise, we should go back and see what else he talks about, what else he tells us about these people before he gets to their amazing family life. So the reflection that some of the Mufassirun have told us is that good family life, the fact that people who will go to paradise will have an amazing family life, an amazing marriage, an amazing home, is mentioned last, because everything that is mentioned before it is a prerequisite to being the type of person who can be a good husband, a good wife, a good mom, a good dad. You can't actually be a good husband or a good wife or a good mom or a good dad if you haven't figured these other things out or at least tried to figure them out or made an effort to figure them out and worked on these different <coughs> things. So where are these things? Let's go ahead and go for it. All right. وَعِبَادُ الرَّحْمَنِ الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ هَوْنًا وَإِذَا خَاتَبَهُمْ وَالْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا I'm going to be going through them kind of quickly. I'm going to summarize them, and inshallah, you know, we'll see, time permitting, uh, at some point in time, I'll try to, you know, maybe do like a more detailed analysis of this, and we'll try to make it available online, um, and you'll see that pop up somewhere, but this can be more of a summarized kind of discussion on it. The very first point that Allah says, that the slaves of the most merciful are those who walk upon the earth very you know, casually, very lightly, very easy. Like, home means easy going. That people that when they walk around, they're very chill, they're relaxed, they're easy going. They're not pretentious, they're not argumentative, they're not confrontational, they're not angry, they're not overly, you know, like hypersensitive. None of those things. They're easy going people. So developing an easy going, you know, temperament, and, and attitude is very crucial and critical to being in a healthy relationship by definition of the Quran. And not only are they themselves easygoing, but they develop a thick enough of a skin and they learn how to handle difficult situations so that when somebody gets in their face and gets confrontational with them, they're able to keep their calm and their cool. They're able to remain calm, cool, and collected. They cannot be provoked so easily. They cannot be dragged and pulled into a fight unnecessarily. The next quality Allah says, وَالَّذِينَ يَبِيتُونَ لِرَبِّهِمْ سُجَّدًا وَقِيَامًا And those people who spent their nights for the sake of their Lord, their Master, Allah, in prostration, in sujood, sajda, with their faces on the ground, and qiyam, and standing before God. Standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alright? So that's the next thing, is that these people, what it takes to be in a good healthy relationship, or contribute to a good healthy relationship, is developing your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu has 
this profound statement where he says, "Man kana li salati mudi'an, falilayha adla." Whosoever will be irresponsible about their prayer will be even more irresponsible about everything else in their life. So when they say, "He khairu li Rabbi," fakayfa yakunu fi he khairu li Rabbi. Because if somebody can't find it within themselves to be good with God, how? Why would you ever expect that person to be good to anybody else? That person doesn't respect Allah. They're not going to respect anyone else. The third thing: وَالَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا صَلِّبَ إِنَّا عَذَابَ جَهَنَّمَ إِنَّا عَذَابَ هَكَانَ غَرَامًا إِنَّا نَسَأَتْهُ سَقَرًا وَمُقَامًا. The third thing is about du'a. These people make du'a to Allah to protect them from the fire of hell. There's two things that are mentioned here. The scholars explain. Number one is du'a that somebody is rooted within their du'a. They make du'a. They have that type of relationship with Allah, morning and evening, day and night. And number two is it also shows humility that they are asking Allah to protect them from the punishment of the fire of hell. That means they actually hold themselves accountable for something. That means they realize that they make mistakes and they have faults and they have shortcomings and they commit sins. Because as you start to become a better person, it's very easy to buy a little bit of your own stock. It's very easy to start sipping a little bit of your own Kool-Aid, right? But no, no, these people keep their feet on the ground. وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا أَنْفَقُوا لَمْ يُسْرِفُوا وَلَمْ يَقْتُرُوا وَكَانَ بَيْنَ ذَلِكَ الْقَوَامَةِ And those, they are those people who, when they spend money, they are not extravagant. They don't blow just money left and right. Nor are they stingy and miserly to the point where living with them is difficult. Like it's difficult to live with them, right? But rather, they maintain a balance in the middle. And we're going to have an entire section dedicated to, right, managing finances within marriage. So we'll have a whole section dedicated to this, inshallah. وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَدْعُونَ مَعَ اللَّهِ إِلَهًا آخَرَ وَلَا يَقْتُلُونَ نَفْسَ الَّتِي حَرَمَ اللَّهِ بِلَا بِالْحَقِّ وَلَا يَزْنُونَ وَلَا يَفْعَلْ ذَلِكَ يَلْقَى الْفَعْمَةِ That they are those people that do not associate any partners with Allah. They don't call on anyone other than Allah. They do not kill people. Unjustly and wrongfully, nor do they commit fornication, nor do they fornicate, nor do they cheat, nor do they engage in immoral sexual behavior or activities. And we are going to have an entire section dedicated to this that talks about intimacy between the spouses and within marriage. And there will be some very, very, very serious. It's a very direct conversations we're going to engage in there about the immorality and the immoral sexual activity and engagement and indulgence that has become the norm and the culture today. But it is unacceptable. So the purpose of this particular point is these are people who avoid sins, make an active effort to avoid sins and cut out sins and remove sins from their life. And specifically, the scholars point out that the point of zina is mentioned here. They don't cheat. And keep in mind that the Prophet ﷺ in a hadith, in an authentic narration, tells us, yes, it might not carry that same type of legal status, but the Prophet ﷺ says from a spiritual perspective, make no mistake that just as you ascribe zina, fornication, adultery, cheating, to the Pardon me, to the genitals, right? Engaging in actual, like sexual activity, being physically intimate, as we talked about before, with somebody else that is not your spouse. But the Prophet ﷺ said, "Be very spiritually cautious and careful that zina of the eye is a thing, and zina of the ear is a thing." Right? When when you are looking at things, you should not be looking. To, listening to things that you should not be listening to, Enge engaging in conversations that you know are fundamentally problematic. Here, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, <laughs> that there's a great, terrible punishment in store for such people. May Allah protect us all. But then Allah says, "Illa man taba wa amana wa amila amalan salih." That's the next point. Except for those people who not only repent. Meaning, they turn back to God, see, repent, 
That's another Muslim English word, right? That they turn back to Allah, they reconcile with Allah, they make good with God, right? They believe and they consistently amila amalan salihan. Can everyone hear the repetition? Amila amalan. Do you hear that? That means they consistently, regularly keep chipping away, small or big, morning or evening, you know, however it is, they keep chipping away at trying to do good deeds. They build on every good deed by being, by moving on to another good deed. All right? And that's the next thing is that developing some spiritual strength within yourself. That you focus on delving, you focus on building the habit of doing good. فَأُولَٰئِكَ يُبَدِّلُ اللَّهُ سَيِّئَةٍ حَسَنَاتٍ Allah will convert their sins into good deeds. وَكَانَ اللَّهُ غَفُورًا رَحِيمًا وَمَنْ تَبَعَ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا فَإِنَّهُ يَتُونُ إِلَى اللَّهِ مَتَابًا That somebody who does turn back to Allah and focuses on doing good, that person has truly reconciled with Allah. وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَشْهَدُونَ الزُّورٍ Then here's the next thing. Right before Allah gets to the point about family life and marriage, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that they are those people who do not go to bad places. They avoid places where they know sin will be engaged in and indulged in. And I know somebody's obviously thinking that, well, isn't this talking about, you know, could some, couldn't somebody get the wrong idea about like spiritual elitism and thinking that you're better than people or you're too good to go over there? No, no, no. That's a mistake that a person makes individually. That doesn't change the fact that if I know going there is trouble for me, I need to stay away. See, the phrasing is completely different. Those people are bad, so I'm not going to go there. Versus me going there is trouble. I will be troubled if I go there. I will be troubled if I show up there. I will be troubled if I engage in this activity. That's nothing but trouble for me. That's a very real idea that we have to be conscious of. وَإِذَا مَرُوا بِاللَّهُوِ مَرُوا كِرَامًا And that's the point. That even when they do come across something that isn't the most appropriate or best thing to be doing, they conduct themselves in a very dignified manner. They don't engage into it, but at the same time, they don't put down other people either. They learn to handle themselves, conduct themselves with dignity, even in undignified places. They can maintain their dignity in, you know, undignified situations. وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِّرُوا بِآيَاتِهِمْ لَمْ يَخِرُوا عَلَيْهَا سُمَّنْ وَعُمْيَانًا And when they are reminded about the signs of Allah, an ayah of the Qur'an is quoted to them, a story from the life of the Prophet is quoted to them, it is not falling on deaf ears and it is not falling on blind eyes. But they listen and they pay attention and they learn. They dedicate themselves to a life of learning. They know, they feel that they always have something to learn. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the dua that I had explained to you before, then Allah talks about their family life. So Zab Murphy, I told y'all, that love, love is not enough of a foundation for a good marriage. And you probably understood what that meant. But look what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just said. Now, eat, let each and every single one of us, those who are married and those who aren't, measure ourselves up against this passage and see where do we exactly stand. And what, what do we have to work on? And how much more work do we have to do? All right. <clears throat>